Greetings and welcome to Indian Trail Presbyterian Church's worship this day. We thank you for joining us at whatever time and from wherever you join us as we are connected today by the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ in our worship. Today is a particularly um, significant day in the life of not just the Presbyterian Church, but the Church of Christ throughout the world, as it is the first Sunday in October, on which many congregations and denominations celebrate World Communion Sunday. We acknowledge today that we are not just the people of God in Indian Trail at the Presbyterian Church. We are not just the people of God in the larger Presbyterian denomination. We are the people of God in the Church of Jesus Christ, which is so much bigger than any set of walls, any uh, set of doctrines, any denominational structures uh, that we human beings can build. However, um, for whatever positive reasons we build those walls, uh, they are walls nonetheless that are overcome by the power of Christ's Holy Spirit connecting us uh, as one family of God. And that's what we celebrate today with this World Communion Celebration. Today's uh, sermon will be less of a sermon, uh, a little bit, something a little different as we continue our walk through some of Jesus' healing narratives in the first uh, couple of chapters of Mark's Gospel. Um, we're going to sort of take a, a meditative walk through the scripture in just a few moments. And so I would invite you, if, uh, if you would like to have your Bible in front of you, open to Mark 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 40 through 45. Um, also, if you are, and I hope you will, participate with us in communion today, uh, you may gather some bread or wine or juice, and, and wine or juice in your homes to celebrate World Communion Sunday with us. So as I've said, we're, we're continuing this week a, a walk through uh, some healing narratives in the first couple of chapters of Mark's Gospel. Uh, we've looked at two of those stories in chapter one already, and today we come to the last uh, story in chapter one of Mark's Gospel, verses 40 through 45. Let us listen to see what the Spirit would say to the church in this text. A leper came to Jesus, begging him, and kneeling down, he said to him, if you choose, you can make me clean. Jesus moved with pity stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left the man and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once saying to him, see that you say nothing to anyone but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But the man went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country and people came to him from every quarter. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, by the power of your Spirit, speak to us now. Be present with us by your Holy Spirit to move within us as we contemplate this story, this good news. As we imagine ourselves in it, and imagine the healing Christ of the story, within, with, and among us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. A couple of years ago, um, my wife had a, a scare, a health scare, uh, with the possibility of being diagnosed with cancer. She was having some strange symptoms and nothing seemed to explain those symptoms and she had gone to her 
her primary care physician. She'd gone to two or three different specialists to look at different possibilities. And then finally we got to that point where one of the possibilities might be cancer. And so we were encouraged, she was encouraged to, to have a scan done and to test for this cancer. And so we set the date, put it on the calendar and we started waiting and we started praying a lot. I remember praying in my daily devotionals. I remember praying driving down the road. I remember praying in those days in the shower. I remember praying in this sanctuary and walking through the fellowship hall of this church. I remember praying, begging God, kneeling before God in my prayers, begging God to please not let this be. And then, of course, the day came for the test, and uh, she had the scan, and we waited in that uh, uh, waiting room at the hospital for the call from the doctor to see what it said. And it was clean, cancer-free, no signs of cancer. We walked out of that room, and walking down the hall, I literally broke down in tears. Tears of relief, tears of absolute gratitude to God that our prayers have been answered. Stories like this one we've just read in Mark's gospel, the healing of the leper, Jesus reaching out, touching the man and making him clean immediately. Stories like this invite us, invite us to recognize and celebrate the power of God in the story, but it, they also invite us to consider how God has touched our own lives, how God has healed us and those we love, how God is at work even now in our lives, and, and also perhaps how healing has not come as soon as we would have wanted or how healing has not come yet, it seems. Stories in the gospel like this invite us to consider those kinds of questions. And so uh, rather than just being sort of a, a normal sermon, I would like to invite us to take a meditative, prayerful walk through this passage of Scripture today. I'm going to guide us through it, reading a portion of Scripture at the time and, and asking some questions for us to consider in our prayerful meditation. Um, I would invite you to have the Scripture open before you if you like, if you think that's helpful, or you can simply listen. Um, you might close your eyes as we uh, walk through this scripture, or you might consider um, the, the symbols of the faith that are before us, uh, the, co the communion, the baptismal font, the cross, other symbols of faith that are important to you. However you choose to, to do this, may God guide our prayer, may God guide our thoughts, our hearts, and our meditations. Let us walk with the Spirit through this text. A leper came to Jesus begging him, and kneeling he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. As we prayerfully consider this text, this image of a man coming, begging, kneeling before Christ, it's important, I think, that we remember the implications of leprosy in Jesus' day. Leprosy, whatever form it took and however serious it was, any sign of leprosy cut the, the afflicted off from the community, cut the afflicted person off from connection with family, cut the afflicted person off from participation in the worship life of the people. Cut off from life, living on the outskirts, on the outer edges, literally and figuratively. We come as God's people begging God, kneeling before God for all kinds of healing. 
Yes, physical healing, sickness, disease, pain, aging bodies. But also emotional healing. The healing that comes with forgiveness. The need for healing in our relationships. Loneliness, fear. Feelings within us that we know we ought not have and that scare us. With what plea for healing do we come begging kneeling before Christ let us consider in silence Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched the man and said to him, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what that must have been like? How that must have felt. The transformation, the healing, the newness of life. Immediately, we are told. Maybe you don't have to imagine. Maybe, maybe you have experienced such healing, be it physical or emotional or mental or spiritual. How have you experienced healing in your life? whether it was immediate or gradual, where have you known the, the transforming power of God's grace and love? Or here's a question. Has healing been slow to come? Does it seem your prayers have not been answered? Has healing come in different ways? I shared a story a few weeks ago about my great aunt who dying of liver cancer experienced healing not in the form of cancer leaving her body but in the form of peace 
with her God. In what ways are we still waiting expectantly for the touch of Jesus' hand? After sternly warning him, Jesus sent the man away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But the man went out and began to proclaim it freely, to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. Volumes have been written about why Jesus might have commanded silence here and in other places in the Gospels. Uh, that's perhaps a consideration uh, for another sermon or Bible study. But more immediately concerning for us today as we consider this healing story, more immediately concerning to us is the question, how will we proclaim it freely? When we experience the healing and wholeness that God offers us, how will we respond? How will we spread the word that we have been touched by the hand of Christ? And now, holy God, may the meditations of all our hearts and minds that have come to this point and that come from this point be acceptable and pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends, our faith proclamation is that God who created all things, the creator of the universe and all the universes, has created us in God's image, loves us, cherishes us. And even when we have gone astray, continues to call us back into relationship, into the family of God, into the household of God. And did that in the most profound way when God came to us in Jesus Christ to live with us, to teach us, to open for us the power of God, to die for us, for the forgiveness of our sins, to be raised again that we might have the hope and the promise of life anew, life anew here, life, fullness of life today and eternal life in the kingdom of God to come, which is coming. 
Our proclamation is that that same God, through the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has come to us to sustain us, to guide us, to continue with us toward God's kingdom. This ritual, this sacrament, this sacred meal that we share together is the way in which we live out what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. We reenact God's gracious act of love in Christ. We acknowledge once again the God of all creation who cherishes us. We give thanks for uh, his gift of grace and forgiveness and reconciliation and salvation. And we expect to experience in this meal the presence of the risen Christ by the power of Christ's Holy Spirit as we share in this sacrament. We invite you to participate in this holy meal that today is also symbolic of our connection to Christians across the world as we share this world communion, this world uh, celebration of the Lord's Supper. You, of course, do not have to be a member of Indian Trail Presbyterian Church or a Presbyterian to participate in communion in our tradition. We have an open table, and our Lord invites all who believe and trust in him to share in this meal. Let us now pray together. Holy God, who is our creator, your will for us and for all your people is health and salvation. And so you came to us in Jesus Christ, your son. You came that we might have life and have it in abundance here and now and forever in your kingdom. And you dwell among us by the power of the Holy Spirit, dwelling among us, but also within us and working through us to make us temples of your presence. And so to you, triune God, the source of all love and life, we offer our prayers for your people in all kinds of need for healing. We offer our prayers for all who are disabled by injury or illness. We offer our prayers for all who are troubled by confusion or pain. We offer our prayer for all whose increasing years bring weariness. We offer our prayers to all, for all who are about to go, undergo surgery or who are recovering from surgery. We offer our prayers for all who cannot sleep. We offer our prayers for all who practice the healing arts. Not just physicians and medical workers, although of course them, but also your people who in any way participate in bringing healing and wholeness to your children. And now, holy God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after he had given thanks for it, he broke it. He then gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. He took the cup in the same way, and he said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. And so, friends, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that you have fed us in the sacrament, that you have united us in Jesus Christ, that you've given us a foretaste of that kingdom meal we shall share in the glory of your presence in the glory of your kingdom, in the fullness of time. And now send us out, praying for healing and wholeness, expecting healing and wholeness, trusting in your healing and wholeness. And by the power of your spirit, participating with you in bringing healing and wholeness, to those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we leave this time of worship, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>